Thanks everyone for coming. Uh, my name is Andre Smolik and I'm from Curtin University of Western Australia. Um, one thing that you might notice is that the title might be different to what is in the book and that is because it's a revised version and I'll be showing you some additional stuff that didn't make it to the um, uh, publication unfortunately. Um, so I'm going to be presenting a collaborative project between the School of Built Environment in Western Australia and National Yulin University of Science and Technology in Taiwan and it revolves around uh, construction of a responsive carrier component envelope that responds to external stimuli. Um, and I'm quickly going to go over some of the conceptual ideas and uh, um, the history of uh, responsive architecture. Um, one of the forerunners of the field is, of course, um, Nicholas Negroponte. In Building upon Negroponte, Tristan Sturck writes, um, that within the work, Negroponte proposes that responsive architecture is the natural product of the integration of computing power uh, into built spaces and structures. Um, as time progressed, more advanced um, um, methods for uh, producing architecture were developed, this kind of uh, interactive architecture. Um, in 1991, Mark Weiser described ubiquitous computational systems uh, and the point at which computers become sufficiently widespread to be embedded in everyday objects and spaces, uh, quote, weaving themselves into the fabric of everyday life until they are indistinguishable from it, end quote. Um, lowering costs of computational devices and development tools like processing and Arduino um, uh, means that it is now possible for non-engineers to build experimental systems experimental computational systems. Um, as Dade Robertson points out, in architecture user interface, uh, while field of ubiquitous computing and human uh, computer interaction are seeking the development of ambient interfaces, architecture will in inevitably uh, have a role in this development. The, the notion of uh, design process through um, uh, sorry. The, the notion of design process through uh, which architecture affects responsive technology is what we are attempting to explore here. Um, so here uh, we are looking at a number of precedents and attempting to formulate a design strategy for assembling these uh, interactive carry component services. Uh, so basically we broke it down into four main categories. Uh, one of which is the augmented space, uh, one of the prominent examples of which is the tangible uh, media group at MIT that uh, essentially hacks space through a variety of projections uh, and uh, sensors and that sort of thing. It allows you to communicate with essentially uh, augmented uh, space and objects. Um, interactive slash reactive objects are slightly different because they now start to implement objects or sculptural objects within which uh, reactive media takes place. So for instance, the Toyota Tower of the Winds or the D Tower by Knox. Um, component networks is yet another uh, um, category and it is the uh, discrete components that have the ability to interact with one another but can also act uh, independently and the example of that is the Urban Pixel Project by the MIT Media Lab. Um, uh, responsive services and envelopes is uh, a topic that we're uh, kind of exploring here and focusing on and uh, two examples here are the Institute of Monde Arabe in Paris by Jean Nouvel number three and number one is Alliance Arena by Herzog and de Biron. So these projects um, introduce structural uh, systems of structure, systems of materiality and uh, form as well as uh, augmented and um, responsive interaction. Um, we are uh, addressing these issues from a body of previous research that Sandit Data uh, has developed over the years that is concerned with carry component envelopes and all that it means is that there is a component that is designed that can be applicable to a surface, so it's parametrically linked to a surface usually through uh, UV subdivisions. Um, so the design criteria for responsive carry component envelopes that we have developed is 
One, the envelope should be defined by carrier surface geometry and structural support. Grid that envelops space and acts as architectural armature for responsive prototyping. So this is the physical manifestation or physical envelope. Um, the surface two, the surface should be comprised of a collection of discrete components uh, that form an integrated connection between responsive and physical components. In other words, the, the physicality of the object uh, or the design process focuses on the physicality of the, of, of the object driven by the responsive framework. Um, three, each component should support open-ended uh, reprogrammable input-output logic. Components should be reprogrammable and reconfigurable to allow a broader range of experiments with interactivity. The network should support accessibility and flexible placement with the design of LED <coughs> infrastructure. Very similar to the uh, urban pixels project where these are discrete components and they can act both independently or in a linear sequence. Whew. So the first stage of the project was the development of structural and material prototypes that we can use as a framework for the interactivity. Um, so these are a number of uh, very kind of sim simple uh, projects. One is diagonal half lap grid structure, which uh, basically serves as a projection between two uh, doubly curved surfaces, creating a grid type uh, scenario. The other one is an unrolled parametrically perforated triangulated mesh uh, developed with a, uh, a kind of generative um, uh, bitmap at the bottom, and then we uh, subdivide it and develop it into strips, unroll it and develop it into one-to-one -one scale prototypes. Um, and here we're experimenting with both structural and aesthetic uh, sensibilities of this project, uh, where light, materiality and uh, kind of spatial characteristics kind of meet. Um, number two, discrete components. Uh, this is another uh, element of this project where we're experimenting with discrete electronic systems within individual components and how they can be integrated to allow for a kind of detachable modular character of the project. So on the left you have the complete aggregated structure. Um, on the, in the center we have the, uh, the component fitted with sensor technology and linked uh, to <coughs> neighboring modules with uh, a designed tectonic elements that also carry through information um, and essentially the, the project incorporated an Arduino chip linked to a sound sensor and a series of LEDs connected in a linear sequence. So it's a very simple but we sort of exploring the tectonics and how that could be deployed with a series of uh, interactivity and uh, these sorts of systems. Um, so the, coming up to the project that we're doing now and uh, uh, the project system uh, which we're developing um, revolves around flexibility of the interactive environments. So essentially the, uh, we have two main inputs which is the camera feed and the local area network and they uh, contribute information to the microcontroller or, the, or uh, any kind of algorithm um, which then activates the LED and allows for a responsive interaction. Uh, now the development of this project that we see further on is uh, integrating sensory networks uh, into the components and that can be done because of the conception of components as modular so we can essentially replace different components with different types of sensors, different types of outputs to kind of allow for a broader range of experimentation with um, responsive systems. Um, also microcontroller uh, is linked to the uh, essentially the internet and this allows for a possibility for the user to be more engaged with the kinds of systems that we're implementing uh, computationally. So the interaction uh, can be more transparent to the user and that's essentially what we want to experiment in the next stage. Um, so this is the space in Taiwan and by the way we're building the full-scale prototype between 21st and 33rd of August in the uh, workshop that uh, Tang Wong is putting together in Dolia. Um, so essentially you have the mezzanine floor stair that connects the bottom and top floors and you have the exit there through the um, glass uh, wall there. And essentially this is our <coughs> initial uh, design which connects the stair to the uh, top entrance 
and essentially wraps the, the stair. And also you can see the both surfaces from the top of the mezzanine and the bottom floor. So essentially this is why we deployed the extrusion of the triangles because it looks very similar from top and bottom. And again, we're experimenting with um, carrier surface variation. So experimenting with different ways of generating that surface. And we haven't really kind of developed it very much, but we're kind of hoping to uh, use some of the structural optimization to work out problems with construction. Um, we went to Dolio last year and we tested some of their fabrication equipment, uh, some of the electronics and some of the tools that they're using over there. And uh, we're going there this, this year in August and hopefully we'll kind of uh, uh, iron out some of the problems, structural problems and uh, software problems that we were having last time. So we did some component tests and we explored different ways in which uh, LEDs react to different lighting situations. We explored the ways that we can connect different components to each other and whether the components themselves can be separated, whether the quad should be subdivided or triangulated, and whether those triangles have to be separated or joined together, um, and which ways are more cost efficient or efficient in terms of fabrication time, etc. Um, another kind of interesting thing that we found out through this process is that the topology of the linear connections of elements becomes quite important where they become articulated in the form of geometry and connections. And, that <clears throat> and the fact that the components have to be uh, logically connected creates a number of uh, very interesting problems. Um, so this is a kind of developed version of that component. So it's a, a, a basic rectangle triangulated. We have a component that is, that is fitted into the structural frame. So this is just a kind of section through the main frame. And then we have the component slotted in so you can slot it out and replace it with a different sensor. Uh, both, both triangulated pieces have input and output that feeds through the main structure and the, um, each one of them have, has an LED component in it. And here's a little, I don't know, how do you play this? Oh, there you go. Um, so thanks. Um, so this is a little simulation that we did. So we're using um, Rhino and um, Grasshopper along with some custom scripts and uh, Firefly to connect the global geometry to camera input. And uh, essentially what you're seeing at the bottom there is um, the, the camera pixels and they're just mapped to the components on the global surface. And this is just a quick prototype that we've developed to implement it in the first stage. And then after that, because it's modular, because it's flexible in terms of how the information can be fed in, we can create different scenarios for the interactivity. Um, so topics for future research, the tessellation of the carrier surface must be rationalized to account for both particle relationships as well as control of component variation and scale. So the size of each component is very important because the, the smaller the component, the denser the resolution, but that also increases the fabrication complexity and the number of pieces that you have to put together. If you increase the size of the piece, it drives up the constraints in terms of fabrication. Um, to the digital to physical translation from rationalized geometry to material requests for the inputs in the selection of materials, the tectonic properties as well as uh, consideration of the assembly. So that point goes back to the, the structural ration rationalization and optimization of the structure um, that we're still working on. Uh, number three, incorporation of responsive elements in the form of electronic components and sensors required uh, careful consideration of the interaction logic, input output behaviors as well as sizing and resolution of components. And four more complex scenarios integrating apps and sensor networks and using <coughs> other development tools such as processing, open CV, and 4V as a topic of future research. Um, that, that's it.